Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Glory Room. I'm Prophetess Lou. Before we get started, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for life, health, and strength. Thank you for loving us and taking care of us. Father God, forgive us of any sins we've done, knowing and unknowingly. Father God, we ask you to help us to understand the word that's in this devotional. Father God, help us apply it to our life. Holy Spirit, we welcome you onto this podcast. We ask you to bless the ones that are reading it and bless the ones that are hearing it. Father God, we ask you for favor today with anyone we come across. Father God, we ask you to help us to learn this devotional or listen this devotional and pass it on to others that needs it as well. Father God, we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Verse of the day is Philippians 3.13. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it by focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. Subject, not looking back, but pressing forward. Christian truths, I'm going to say it and pause behind each one to give you opportunity to say it if you like. I'm not looking back. I'm pressing forward. I'm forgetting the past. I'm a servant of God. We must forget what was held, what has held us back. We must forget what the enemy used to have us bound to. We used to be bound to and what we are what, what, what our struggles used to be. We must forget it and look forward to what God has for us and what doors he can open for us. And a lot of times, some of us just focus on our past, focus on past hurt and trauma that we can't be free from. We are going in circles because we feel we still have to be attached to those very things that kept us away. Paul is saying today, don't focus on any of that. He said, focus on what lies ahead and we must do the same. Verse 14, I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. He said, I press on so much that all I see is the heavenly prize that is promised to them. That fight, a good fight. The heavenly prize to have eternal life. We won't be able to have those things if we are constantly stuck on what our past is, was. We can't expect others to see past our past if we're still dabbling in it ourselves. Verse 16, but we must but we must hold on to the progress we have made, already made. He said to hold on to what you have done. The moment we step back or look back, we lost what we gained. Don't let the things of this world make you think for one second that your past can help you and it can't. Now that you are, we are free, let go of who you were and what you used to do and focus on God. Lot's wife were told not to look back. She was warned, but what did she do? She looked back. She turned to a pillow of salt. Some of us are looking back, focusing on what we could have been and what we could have done differently. But let me tell you something, friends. Come here. Let me tell you something. Looking back isn't what we should do. The enemy wants us to look back. He wants us to desire what was. If he can get us to look back, he can start planting seeds of being curious. If he can get us to look back, he can start planting seeds of maybe I can do this or that again. Don't look back and wonder. Keep looking forward and one and know that your future with God is more promising than looking back. Looking back places us in in, def- in defeat because that's all our past was now we are winning in jesus name genesis 19 26 but lot's wife looked back and she became a pillar of salt luke 9 and 62 look luke, jesus said to him no one who puts his hand on the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of god the word of god tells us here again if you look back you aren't fit for the kingdom it's only misery and regret in the past it's nothing good but when we take the time to reminisce and allow our past to play in our head we aren't fit for the good work of god in order to be fit for the kingdom we must push forward the holy spirit wants us to know that god has something better in store for us but we must be ready to accept in 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 the first stages is accepting is dismissing the past and setting our face forward towards god philippians 3 and 8 Indeed, I count everything as a loss because of the surpassed worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ. We studied this verse the other day or a couple weeks ago, but the Holy Spirit wants us to look at this again. He said that it is rubbish that's in our past. If we don't look and see it as such, we won't gain anything. Start placing what you feel and what you want in god and he will help you overcome it he can't if you won't today if you can't let go of the past if you can't let go of what you used to be and what you used to do ask the holy spirit right now to help you deny what the enemy is trying to plant in you 
and to help you press forward to what God has in store for you. Prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for giving us another day we never seen. Thank you, Father. We ask you to forgive us of our sins. We ask you to renew us and transform us. Father, we ask that you give us more and more peace. Lord, today's devotional told us not to look back, but to keep pushing forward. And Father, that's that's hard to do. We ask you to help us with our struggles. Help us with our heartaches and misery. We need so much in our lives. We ask you that you continue to build in us. We continue to change us. We want to change. We want you in our lives. And sometimes, Father, we slip. But we ask you to help us to get back into you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. So today's topic is not looking back, but pressing forward. I'm going to give everyone a few seconds to get their Bible or something to drink. Like I said, I think a couple weeks ago, I'm going to try to keep this a bare minimum of 20 minutes. If it goes over, it goes over. But the max minimal, ma- max amount will go to is maybe 25 minutes. But I never like to put a cap on the time. I just like to give everybody a basis just in case. But if you are looking for a shorter version of this, please click on the mini. It will give you a shorter version of me just reading the devotional. Um, so not looking back, pressing forward. When I first gave my life to Christ, that was something I had a problem with. Um, the enemy will give me, I like, I, I guess I could say I like the daydream or I, I'm a daydreamer. And um, the enemy will a lot of times flash my past back to me. And a lot of times I will be in such a gone state in my daydream that it would take me a few minutes to get out of it. Even if I didn't want to view it, I, I couldn't get out of it. I knew it was the attack of the enemy. But as I grew, I realized that it was some part of me that missed it. And I missed it because of routine. I, if you know me, I'm a routine person. I'm not going to get out of routine. If I get out of routine, I'm a little upset because I like my schedule to go according to plan. And so and that's something God's working on me with. So <laughs> that's a little tidbit about me. But I enjoyed drinking. I enjoyed it because it was it, at the time. I enjoyed drinking at the time because it was something I did when I got off work. Whether it was for relaxing or whether it was just to do it. It was just something to do. And at the time I didn't realize I was an alcoholic, but we're going to unpack that later. That's not the point of it. But when I first gave my life to Christ, that's what he plays in front of me. He, he would go, he would, I hear him several times in my head say, don't you miss the drinking? Don't you miss going to bed and waking up and getting another drink? Don't you miss having the fun activities, the collecting all the drinks on Friday evening, the drink on Saturday? And he would go on and on and on. And I had someone one time to say to me, when this happened, say, I rebuke you. And I thought to myself, this is not going to help about no daydream and no thoughts that he's given me. So it happened. And I said, I rebuke you. And it happened again right behind it. I said, I rebuke you. And I said it with a little bass in my voice, a little more authority. And it went away. Once I stopped letting it in and allowing him to do it, he couldn't do it. The problem is with Satan's temptations and the seeds he plants in us, we allow it to happen because small parts of us miss the sin. And maybe it's not the sin. Maybe it's something else that's tied to it. That's something you have to figure out. But wherever it is, you have to figure out and you have to singe it. You have to cut it. Um, My sister gave me a plant. And sometimes it gets these brown leaves and I will have to take it to her and let her cut it because I feel like I'll overcut it or take out the leaves. However she do it, I don't know. And she do it because she said the brown leaves, the brown leaves can't stay with the healthy leaves. So we can't allow his planted seeds to stay in our head. We can't allow the daydreams to keep happening. We can't allow ourselves to reminisce because as long as we're dabbling, the enemy's going to think it's okay to come at us with seeds and saying, you need to go back. <laughs> That's going to be a fun time. Like now you're older. It's going to be a fun time. And you have to think to yourself, do I want to go back to emptiness? Do I want to go back to not having peace? Because in God, there's peace. In God, there's happiness. In God, there's mercy and grace. With God, there's everything. And when you look back, what your life used to be is rubbish. 
That's what Paul was saying in one of the verses. Go all the way down here. I'm skipping some of these verses because I, I got to hit this right quick. He says, indeed, I count everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Jesus Christ and my, my Lord. For his sake, I suffered the loss of everything. Count them as rubbish. He's saying your past is rubbish. He's saying knowing God is more worthy and more worth everything. We studied this the other week. He's saying today to us is that studying and, and, and thinking about your past, it's nothing in it. It's nothing but misery and heartache. It's nothing but sadness and gloom. I was a drunk then. I was nothing then. I didn't have peace then. I didn't feel love then. I felt out of character. I felt off. But now, being a child of God, I'm from a royal priesthood. I have mercy and grace on my side. I have a relationship with Christ. I'm saved. I'm free. I'm a servant of God. We can walk in our authority when we walk in God. We don't have to worry about what we did and what we used to do. We don't have to worry. We don't have to lean on what the enemy is trying to plant in our heads. We can dismiss him and rebuke him. But the problem is we got to do it. We got to say, no, Satan, I rebuke you. I'm not being tempted by that anymore. I rebuke you. I'm not a babe in Christ anymore. I'm not a babe to fall to that. I'm mature now. I love God. I chose this day who I'm going to serve. It's going to be Jesus. We got to start taking that approach because the moment that we start taking that approach, he can't come at us just like he tried to come at Jesus in the desert. He came to Jesus three times and three times Jesus basically rebuked him, told him to get out of his face. We got to do the same thing. As long as we sit there and entertain it, as long as we sit there and accept it, he's going to keep coming. But the moment we stand there with the strength of God and say, God, I need you. He's going to show up and give us the strength. God, I need you. He's going to show up and give us the mercy and grace and give us the willpower to say, no, I don't need that. But we got to be the ones to do it. It's all about us. It's free will. Who will you serve? What will you pick? It's up to us. It's not up to no one else but us. Okay. So another verse we studied today in this, it says, but we must hold on to the progress we have made. If we continue to dabble, we're going to lose progress. We continue to look and continue to meddle. We're going to lose our anointing. Our anointing is going to be dealt. It's not our anointing. God's anointing is going to be doubled and taken away from us because you chose what you wanted. When you chose, you don't want the progress that you made. It's like knowing the truth and not following it. You know the truth of God will, will take the, the, you know the truth of God will bring the light into the room. Why would you go turn the lights off then? Why would you go leave it? We have to start following God. We have to start letting go of, of this thing of, I'm my own person because we're not anymore. We're children of God. And the verse here today says that we have to hold on to the progress. We have to hold on to God. We have to hold on to his hand. And a lot of times that's hard. Sometimes temptation is hard to deny. Sometimes looking back at our past is hard to deny. It is. But we have to be the ones to hold on to our progress because no one else is. We're going to keep starting over. We're going to keep starting over if we keep holding on to old things. Okay. Luke 9, 62, it says, Lord Jesus said to him, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. I think I've told y'all that many times. My mother told me that so many times, almost every day when I gave my life to God. And I thought to myself, my goodness, mom, please. <laughs> she would give me that verse. And she even texted me the verse. She even, when she seen me in the morning, she said the verse to me. I'm like, I'm not looking back. And I feel like God told her, she's not struggling, but she's there. I need you to, to say this to her. And she said it to me every day. And I kept thinking to myself, she was just being a nuisance. I, I said it. I'm just being honest. I said that. But when I look back at it now, that was God telling me, don't look back. Don't put your hand to me and look back. Because you're not going to be fit for anything. Because when God pulls us out of a situation and he sets us on steady ground, we have to keep walking. We have to keep walking. Because the moment that we stop and we look back, we're going to regret it. Because the past is something that is so overwhelming. Because it's filled with things of memories. It's filled with things that we used to do. It's filled with I'm going to say it a good time. But good time days are over with. Those type of good times. 
the good kind of days, good kind of good kind of good days are we looking at now? Are worshiping God, praising God, reading our word, meditating, building a relationship with the Holy Spirit. That's a good time. We no longer need a joint or a, a bottle, a whiskey or tequila to give us a good time. We just need the Holy Spirit. We have to choose what we're going to do. Are we going to pick the good time that's in the world that's not going to last? Are we going to pick praising God? I've had the best days in my life when I got home, took a shower, and I praised God, and the, the anointing will fall into the room, and I would just lay out and just speak in tongues. And his presence would be in the room. It would be so heavy in the room, I couldn't move. Just the other day, I was praising him, and this, the, the, his presence fell in the room. I couldn't move. I was just so in awe. It was the best feeling in the world. We have to figure out what is our best feeling in the world. Don't let people and things and ideals flutter your mind and tell you that living the right, the straight and narrow, isn't the right thing. Don't let people tell you that YOLO, you only got one life to live. Oh, this is my life. No one not could tell me. I can still do this and do that. No, you can't. You cannot dabble in the world and worship God. You can, but I'm telling you, it's not going to end right for you. You're going to wind up picking one or the other. It says it in the Bible. No person can serve two masters. They're going to either serve the one or deny the other. Which one are you going to serve? Okay. Let's look at some um, Bible verses. If you got your Bible, go to Isaiah 43 and 18. Isaiah 43 and 18. I keep missing that. There we go. I came right up on it. Praise God. <laughs> okay. 43 and 18 in NIV says, Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. NLT says this, but forget all that is nothing compared to what I'm going to do. Okay? It says, remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Nor consider the things of old. Forget your past. Remember not the former things, not to consider the things of old. Don't even think about it. Don't even remember it. Don't even remember this. And I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and say it's going to be easy for you to say, hey, I'm not going to remember Especially if you're a babe in Christ, especially if you're struggling, you're slipping in your, in your Bible reading and meditation. Yeah, it's going to be hard. It's going to be really hard for you not to do that. But when you get grounded in God and babes in Christ, it gets easier. Some people don't have this problem. Some people do. We all are different. No one here to point fingers. We, we're not the, 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 the council. But what we are here to do is learn. And what we are here to do is be real. Sometimes it is hard not to let it is hard to let go of a memory because maybe someone's tied to that memory. And sometimes we don't want to let go of that memory because we feel like we're gonna let go of that person. But sometimes we have to let go of that person in that memory at the same time. Because more and better memories are, are going to be created with God, but we have to allow him to be able to create those memories and have us to create those memories with other people. I remember um I'm trying not to cry because it is it's touching to me. Um, I didn't realize I was a drunk. And um, a lot of my memories, like um, little things, I had made those memories with drinking. And when I first gave my life to Christ, I, I tried to make those memories without drinking. I would be like, okay, y'all, let's do this. You know, let's just try to make a better memory for me. And everyone would help me do that. And they will replace those memories for me. And it might sound silly to someone that doesn't deal with, that never dealt with someone that has a drinking problem or other problems. It might sound silly to you, but someone that has a drinking problem, someone that's coming from those things, you want to build new memories, fresh memories, happy memories. Because some of the memories that I had when I was drinking were terrible. I, I drunk to drink the pain away. I drunk to... So I can not feel, but I don't have to do that anymore. So whatever your memory is based on, if it's pain or hurt, ask God to help you build another memory 
Ask God to help you pull off the former things because there's nothing there. The Bible verse, Isaiah 43 and 18 says, remember not the former things, not consider the things of old. Because if you really think about it, those things are nothing good. It's, it's nothing there at all. Let's hit this verse real quick. Hebrews 8 and 12, and I will forgive their wickedness. I will never again remember their sins. Remember that whatever you're going through, be it really, really bad, bad, whatever, go to God. He says here, I will forgive you of your wickedness. I will never remember it. Other people will remember it. Other people will remember your past. Other people will pick fun of you, but not God. He will forgive you and he will say, okay, let's move on. You can always guarantee that with him. He's not going to shake his finger at you. He's not going to tell you how terrible you are. He's going to say, I will never again remember the sin. So go to him every day and say, God, I'm sorry. God, please help me with this. And he will. Hope you all have a blessed day. Remember, Jesus loves you. I love you too. Remember to click that like, follow, or subscribe button. And thank you so much for listening. Have a blessed day.